Hi everybody, welcome to Pace Studio on the Road. We are live at the Winter Wondergrass Festival in the lovely Olympic Valley Stables in Lake, Lake Tahoe, California with AJ Lee and Blue Summit. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, thank you for being here. Sound check has sounded wonderful and we're about to share four of your songs with our audience. Three of them are from the current record, I'll come back. Um, there is a surprise cover in there, which is not a surprise because I just said what it was, but I will not say the title of that song. That will be your purview and uh, I can't wait. <laughs> okay to share all that with our audience. Thank you for doing it. What do you guys feel like doing first today? We're gonna do a song called Something Special. I say something special about the way you see my soul. Thank you for coming and doing this. We appreciate it very much. Um, can we talk a little bit about this record? So we're hearing three from All Come Back. Um, can you compare and contrast a little bit what you did on the first record versus what people hear on the studio version? And how similar is that to what we're hearing right now in this in this session um, here in the stable? Yeah, uh, I would compare the two albums. The first one, 
I would maybe use the word, at least for us, a little bit more eclectic, because uh, at that time we were mostly just a four-piece. We didn't have Jan in the band quite yet, so we were experimenting. <laughs> Jan Parat. We were experimenting with uh, just kind of different sounds that we were looking for. We have some electric guitar in there. We've got a little bit of clarinet, some drums on the first album. Trumpet. Uh, yeah, some trumpet, too. <laughs> Uh, melodica, but <laughs> the our current album that we have out, it's a little bit more true to uh, how we have been playing music throughout our lives, just more kind of acoustic, more bluegrass influenced, I'd say. Um, and one of the points of making the record was to kind of draw back into that. And, and when we perform these songs live, you're getting pretty much the same uh, sounds as if you were just listening to the album. Is this the way that, that Juan has chosen to mic this, the very much bluegrass style? Do you guys do this in the studio? Do you do a more like traditional multi-track thing, or are you literally just standing around a mic doing it? Uh, this is definitely a bluegrass uh, traditional thing to do the one mic. Uh, if, if anybody's seen Del McCurry, they always do the one mic thing, too. We're doing Del Fest later on this year. Oh. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, uh, we, we don't usually do it for live performances. We actually plug in nowadays because... Uh, we play at rowdy bars a lot, and sometimes with the condenser, it's a little bit harder to. Yeah, well, I, I didn't mean in a, in a live sound context, but in the studio context. Studio. Oh, studio. Uh, yeah, you know, we had we each had our own mic. Yeah, we have we our were own. We playing uh, playing all at the same time, but just just makes it easier for the, the levels and whatnot. Yeah, we were recording up in a, a great studio, new studio up in Coos Bay, Oregon. We got to go up to the coast um, and do a nice record up there, and and um, and it was cool because uh, the studio had some nice sight lines and isolation so it was a, a fun challenge to you know be we, we are used to being more close together when we play live and so we were a little kind of farther apart um but luckily the studio had some nice sight lines for the most part um yeah we also like rigged up some <laughs> mirrors like dual <laughs> mirrors in different places around the studio so you yeah. could just see people's eyes and heads like yeah, <laughs> across our, the studio our, so. our previous guitar player jesse well this is scott gates here on the guitar he's scott the newest member. <laughs> But uh, our previous guitar player is on the on the record, and and I remember he was in the ISO booth, I think, to the right. No, you were in the right of me, but Jesse was somewhere else that I just couldn't see because I was in an ISO booth. So we rigged a mirror where we could just see each other's faces like about this much. <laughs> so we would kind of like make faces at each other while we were doing some rhythm tracks. So that was a fun time. So instead of the heel stomping for rhythm, you've just got to blink for the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to keep yeah, time. I was like mouthing words. <laughs> Nice. Well, thank you for coming and sharing your music. Uh, there's still a lot more to be shared off the current record. I'll come back. What are you going to do second today? Uh, this is going to be a quicker one. I wrote this uh, more in the style of Lester Flat Earl Scruggs just to kind of uh, maybe imagine a banjo, even though we don't have one. This one is called Faithful. <laughs> Our imaginary banjo. Though. We don't yeah. have to pay him. <laughs> it's a ghost banjo. I admit I don't feel like I did before 
AJ, do you rec have you been just always, always aware of um, Earl Scruggs, Lester Flat, and music like that, or do you recall the time, like your first exposure to those artists that really lit the fire for you, or is it just sort of always been around in your life? It's it's pretty much mostly been all around in my life. Um, yeah, I started playing bluegrass around five years old, so I was just kind of thrown into all the music, and and especially going to the CBA Grass Valley Father's Day Festival. It's a real big festival for just jamming and picking and hearing all sorts of different kinds of music. And where I met the Tuttles and also where I met Scott. Tuttles. Um, yep. <laughs> Sully Tuttle on the guitar. Um, yeah, so I've just been kind of hearing it all my life. Who are, can you talk, I mean, you sound like a, a scholar and a student of the, of the genre. And I mean, I'm, as soon as you play, I'm sold immediately. It seems like the truth. Like, whatever you do, it seems very true. So I would like to know from you of, I mean, you're clearly in this scene. Are there um, any artists who you, your contemporaries or people you look, look up to who are really doing it right now that really do it for you, who you're particularly fired up by right now? Hmm. Uh, yeah, as far as right now, I mean, there's a there's just like a few progressive bluegrass bands. I mean, Molly Tuttle being uh, one of the pioneers of yeah. modern bluegrass now. Also, Billy Strings, he's kind of paving the way for uh, a lot of new progressive bluegrass music. But Are you going tonight, or do you guys have a show at the same time? We're, we're playing right after Billy, so I think maybe, town, yeah, yeah, we might catch him, but I'm not really sure. But yeah, just, just uh, those two artists are or uh, folks that I think of. But other than that, I usually go back and listen to older stuff, you know, Emmy Lou Harris, and we've been doing a lot of Merle Haggard songs as well. Nice, I like every one of those answers. I'm glad that I asked, and uh, <laughs> we're, only, we're only halfway through. There's still one more from, from All Come Back coming up right now. What do you want to do third today? This is called Monunga Mine, and I wrote this about a mining accident that happened in 1907 in West Virginia. It goes a little something like this.
事。Thank you. I don't know if the internet heard that or not, but the geese honking out there made for like a really nice pre-applause. <laughs> applause. It sounded nice to me. <laughs> um, how, AJ, are you from the Bay Area or are you based in the Bay Area? Uh, I'm from Tracy, so that I'm, counts. I'm a Central Valley, I guess. Yeah. Almost Bay Area. Um, but uh, I'm it's based not, out of the Bay now. Either. Is that? Do you feel like the your your Bay Area ness or your near your Bay Area proximity roots um, have some significant influence, or do you feel like you're really really more influenced by those records that you're listening to, like we were talking about earlier, the Earl Scruggs and um, et cetera? Um, I would say actually I'm most mostly inter, uh, influenced by my mom because growing up I I didn't really listen to a lot of the albums on my own. I just listened to whatever my mom was listening to. And uh, she's the one who taught me how to sing, and she first taught me how to play mandolin and guitar. So she, she influenced me the most and kind of, you know, said, maybe you should try this song or do this song. And then by, a, you know, building up a repertoire based upon what she's recommending, I think that's kind of what shaped uh, my musical taste now. Yeah, good. Is she, is she still with, is she around this weekend? Uh, she's not around this weekend, but uh, she, she's still around. She's still in Tracy. I grew up with horses and chickens and dogs, so they got to take care of all the animals and stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. hard to get them out of the house. <laughs> well, somebody's got to. It's a constant, constant uh, attention. Mm-hmm. Last time I was in this particular building, there were horses here. I had my high school prom after party in this building because I went oh, to high yeah. school right there. Oh, whoa! And yeah. there were horses, and that was 22 years ago now. And uh, I've never had to take care of horses, but I have mm. partied around horses, so that's neither here nor there. Mm. <laughs> I just wanted you to know that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we were wondering um, that. That little shack over there that has the the names, what, what, like what? Uh, Outside, yeah. Just, yeah the, like can, little stalls. Do you want to do you want to say that on the microphone? Because I don't I don't know. There are people who know a lot more about this than I do. Come on up, or yeah. Go, yeah, yeah those microphone. are the old pony names from when they actually had stables, right? And that's actually the the next ride sign they used here to call out people for their ride around the valley. Uh, oh, yeah. nice. Cool. Oh, they're ponies. We were wondering because they yeah, look too short. They're for pretty horses. small. Yeah. I'm like Ooh, goats, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Nice. Well, thank you again for your time, for your music, for everything. We're having a good time. And now there is, we're going to hear one not from I'll Come Back. Um, what do you feel like closing out the set with today? This is one we learned from Gillian Welsh. This is hers called Tear My Still House Down. <laughs> Still 
house down Go on and tear my still house down Let it go to rest Don't leave no trace of the hiding place of where I made that evil stuff For all my time and money No profits did I see That old copper kettle was the death That's Chad Bowen. I want Chad to Bowen. shout out. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, enjoy the rest of your winter wondergrass. Enjoy the bit of Billy Strings if you're able to see a song <laughs> or two. Enjoy all of your sets, and thank you again for coming and doing this. And best of continued luck on All Come Back. We enjoyed everything that you guys did today. Thank so you. Thank Thanks you. for having Thanks. us. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Right. Nice we'll see you next time. See ya. See ya. We did it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Woo!